Hey everyone, Mr. Mom Collectibles, I'm back with another video, and today what I wanted to do is kind of go through some photos that I got from a uh, friend Monica Du over in HK, who uh, was at the Hot Toys ACG uh, HK uh, event, and um, got some new up-close shots of some of the figures, and so uh, I wanted to kind of go through these photos with you guys and give you my thoughts about um each of the figures that we have on display um there's some photos that we don't have because it's just repetitive information but um some really great high-res stuff they're already posted online in some of the facebook groups six scale survival guide the hot toys hotline group but uh i just want to run through these photos and kind of give you my thoughts about um some of the updates and so just kind of starting through as i said there's really no rhyme or reason just kind of flip through some of these photos but uh the first one you hear is the the john wick and the um the John Wick photos, which this looks fantastic. Um, this is one of the more better up res photos that I've seen from him. Um, you can see the sculpt looks fantastic. Uh, I have the John Wick um, chapter two figure from Hot Toys. And that was like my second or third Hot Toy that I ever purchased. And I absolutely love the figure. Um, love it so much. But uh, it's, it does seem a little dated. The sculpt seems very soft. Um, the texturing on the beard, the hair. Um, I've seen people do sculpt upgrades, but this looks great. I mean, I love the hair, the single-stranded hair, um, kind of like an action pose. And the tailoring on the suit looks so awesome. Um, it looks like that kind of material that he used, which is like the bulletproof vest kind of material. So I really love what I'm seeing here. And um, Donnie Chen, this is another great one. This is one that everyone's been dying for. Uh, whether it's going to be a single, a two-pack, whatever it may be, I, I really do hope we get this. Um, you know, the suit here looks a little bit, it looks a little loose in some areas. I uh, hope it's a little more form fitting, but I like, I'm liking what I see. Everything looks really great here with the tailoring. Um, same thing with the John Wick outfit here. It looks really, really, really great. And here are the accessories um, for Kane, the character of uh, the weapons, the axes, uh, the hands and things like that. And then these are the accessories for John Wick. And you do see the missing finger on some of them, which is really awesome. I really, really excited for this. Um, I know people are kind of have some comments about the weapon choices. Um, they are accurate to the movie. It may not be the overall overwhelming selection that you got with John Wick Chapter 2, but you know the weapons are pretty interchangeable, like the Glock he's using and stuff here. So I think that if you have the John Wick Chapter 2 figure, I know for me, I have him displayed with a couple accessories and there's ones he's not using. So I think it, having them being interchanged uh, won't be a problem. Um, but this is something that uh, a lot of people in the groups have talked about in terms of when they're going to come out. And this is just a great example. It's been preached about on Geeking Out and other channels where you just got to have faith sometimes. Hot Toys has a lot of stuff they're trying to put out. And frankly, there's no rhyme or reason in terms of, uh, at least for me, they're very unpredictable with their scheduling of figures. So the fact that we finally got these ones, obviously we got to be a little reserved because they're not actually out yet for PO at the time of making this video. But it's definitely something to be happy about. And collectors have every right to be happy. Uh, this is a great step forward um, in hoping that we get these actually released for PO. Um, so then moving, and like you see, just another back shot of the hair. Like I didn't get to see these kind of shots before, but like even the beard, it looks really great. The detailing in the beard and the uh, the hair moving, like the gesturing of the hair, it looks awesome. I really, really, really can't wait for these two. And I love the texturing of that suit. It literally looks fantastic. These are just up close detailed pics. Um, once again, of the suit, it really does look awesome. And then this is the feral predator from the movie Prey. Um, please don't shoot me. I haven't seen Prey. I just haven't gotten around to it. It is on my list of things to see. I have seen the previous Predator movies. I am a fan of Predator. I am excited for this. Um, and I know those who are Predator fans are excited for this. Um, it look, the figure looks really great. I have no doubts that they hit a home run on this one. Um, the detailing of the hair, the sculpt, the mask, it really everything just looks on point. Um, I really, really, really am excited. The shield. And I know one of the... I don't want to say complaints, but concerns people have were the uh, the jointed elbows. But it seems to get a little bit looked past because if you stand, it looks like if you stand this kind of up more in a museum pose, that will be disguised. But there's just so much goodness going on with this character that um, 
I think people are willing to look past a couple of things, to be frank, because there's just so much detailing going on that I don't think those are really going to stand out. I just love I love the sculpted uh, braids of the hair, whatever it may be you want to call it. It just looks fantastic. I mean, the detailing in this character is so awesome. And I know that there's other characters from this movie that people are hoping to get. Um, but like I said, this is just it, it's just mind blowing. And as a Predator fan myself, I'll definitely be picking this up. Um, I do got to get around to seeing the movie. I've heard nothing but fantastic reviews from it. Um, so I will have that on my, you know, it, it is on my list of movies. I just honestly, it's one of those just sometimes slips through the cracks of not getting to see it um, when it comes out. But uh, as I said, this is another one that's just absolute home run. And uh, I know a lot of people have seen this, this, these photos before, but these are just, I think a little more high res and more detailed pictures. Monica really, um, usually I usually talk to Monica sometimes we'll be like, Hey, you know, can you get me a picture of this picture of that? And, you know, he, but in general, he takes fantastic photos up close. He, he has a keen eye for knowing what details collectors want to see when he takes photos, when he goes to events. So like I said, shout out to Monica once again, um, love you for taking these photos, man. Absolutely. Great. Like I said, the detailing and everything is, I mean, I know for a lot of people I spoke to, if I turn around and tell them like top one or two figures they were excited about, it's usually like John Wick and, and like this was right there up there with it. It was fantastic. Yeah, the Feral Predator, one six scale. Um, and those are the accessories that it comes with. Base looks cool. Yeah, I'm really excited for this one. Absolutely, it'll be coming home. Um, and then next one is the Black Suit Spider-Man. Um, at the time of making this video, this did go up for PO on Sideshow uh, a day ago. Um, this is another one that when this dropped on the Monday that it came out with all the other summer showcase figures, um, this is one that I was realistically probably the most excited for, um, for me, black suit, Spider-Man, just one from my childhood. I, I love this figure. So I love the character so much. Um, and I'm so excited that we got this as a final release. And like, this is the example I'm talking about with Monica's photos. We've talked about this on streams before other people have said as well. I love that the suit itself is not just a just jet black suit like it is in the comics with the white symbol. There's a lot of texturing. There's a lot of detail. I like the idea that the symbiote sim uh, suit is actually over on top of the existing suit where you kind of see the, the undersuit underneath of it with all the detailing and texturing. Um, I really loved what they did here. Uh, they added somehow they were able to take something like this and just add a lot of detail and intricacy to it. Obviously, like every other Spider-Man suit, you could see like in the thigh, the legs, the shoulder, the uh, outstretched posing. It is going to create creasing with this material. Um, so you got to be prepared as a collector. But if you've had Spider-Man figures in the past, like the advanced suits and other movie suits, um, this is nothing new. If this is your first Spider-Man figure, you got to be really weary about, you know, if you want to take pose it with photos, even look at the crotch grabber. I don't know if you guys can see this right here. But even look at the crotch grabber, how you actually see it bending into the suit. Like, I'm really surprised. I mean, that's one thing from Hot Toys that they really got to start looking at reinventing is the way that they use the crotch grabber and like redesign this piece. Um, just because you could see the digging into the suit right here, the white. And that absolutely, if you're going to pose this with the crotch grabber, even look at the crotch grabber in the back. I don't know if you guys can see my mouse on the screen, but the crotch grabber for the advanced suit. But look at the black. You can see it's digging into the suit right here, which that's... Oof. That does not look good to me. So um, Hot Toys, if you're out there, I mean, you guys really got to think about your crotch grabbers in terms of how to or, or the dynamic flight pole, I should say. Um, you guys seem to be kind of updating a lot of things with your figures. You guys got to take a look at these flight poles and kind of realize that you guys got to come up with a new system because this right here, you're causing damage to your own figure on display at a an event which this doesn't look good i mean the average collector might not know what to look for but um for a spider-man figure and lots this does a lot of damage to the suit so you can see the crink the creasing here in the shoulder um down in the legs but right there that really was alarming and i'm seeing this for the first time watching these photos you can see it's digging into the suit so for those out there this is something to be very mindful of uh, there it is right there you see the creasing right into the suit yeah, that's a no-go. So this is concerning. Um, I'm not concerned about the normal creasing because you get that with a Spider-Man suit, but this right here, yeah, that's that's concerning to me. I love the uh, symbiote accessories. I love that. See the creasing right here in the thigh? Yep, it's good. I mean, it's going to happen. But I love these accessories, um, the detailing in the arm, the, the spider. I love this. This is so awesome. Absolutely. And then the mechanical arms in the back. I love the idea of these mechanical arms with the symbiote kind of wrapped on there. I don't know if this will be able to be taken off or if this is fixated, you know, fixed onto these arms. Um, we'll find out in due time. And then for the, there's a, like a special edition version. Um, 
that you get through Sideshow um, is this, which is the standard Spider-Man. It's like the advanced suit head that's being wrapped in the symbiote, um, which is really awesome. I'm usually really could care less usually about special edition features, but this is one that is pretty much a no brainer. I mean, this is really awesome. Uh, if you're ordering from a local comic book shop, I know not everyone can get these. I know this is usually like a Sideshow exclusive or something like that when you go through Sideshow. Um, but this is just a piece that's it's just so awesome. Yeah. This, so this is this was a day one pre-order. I pre-ordered this already when this came out. So this one I'm really super excited about. And I'm moving on. Um, I, I wanted to bring this up. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video because I had thoughts about this figure and I didn't really get to dive into much detail on like my live stream and some other streams about this. So I wanted to be able to talk about this. And this is one of those where, you know, I hope collectors are happy. Uh, I was one who expressed concern when the community kind of spoke out against this figure. Originally, I know hot toys, they released an all plastic figure and it had all the joints exposed and people were just not a fan of it. I mean, to say people were not a fan of it is probably the most mild way I could say it. People really complained. Um, YouTubers complained. A lot of content creators complained. There's a lot of people said, I'm not buying this because of the way it looks. The only gripe I had with it was I thought it was a little overpriced for what it was, but my stance all the time was that I kind of gave kudos to hot toys for just trying something different. Um, you know, credit to uh, Fab's figures. I was listening to one of his streams and he kind of said it is that hot toys themselves are kind of the experts. I mean, they do make the products. So they kind of understand when they're dealing with a character, what best suits the character. Um, do they get it wrong? Of course they do. But the reality is they hit more home runs than they strike out. That's just what the track record is. So they obviously had a plan in mind for this character when they wanted to display it the way they did with the dynamic posing and things like that. And also the color vibrance. People were already saying that the color looks much more muted because it's on a suit. And I turned around and said, I also give kudos to those people who day one pre-ordered this because they knew what they were wanting. You know, they knew what they wanted when they pre-ordered the figure. And that being said, and I said this over and over again, you know, slapping a suit over it. Yes. It'll make it maybe look visually better, but look at all the creasing that you're going to get. Creasing, 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 creasing. You're back to, uh, you went from a really super dynamically posed figure, which is probably arguably the, would have been the most posable Spider-Man figure to date from Hot Toys. And now you have another museum pose figure that's just going to stand there for most people in museum pose. So for those who complain, complain, complain that they wanted, you know, we want this, we want that, um, you know, it, 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 you got what you wanted. So, and people still complain. They're like, oh, now the creasing, the bunching, look at all this. I, I just say, I hope you guys are happy that, you know, you, people are out there patting themselves on the back that, you know, hot toys listen to the community um, and, and they did, you know, what people wanted. I just hope that you guys got what you wanted because this looks awful. And like I said, I, I applaud Hot Toys for trying something different, um, but they listened to the sales. The sales were probably poor and, you know, they went back and retooled it and people were giving themselves a pat on the back as if, you know, they changed the world. I mean, yeah, they slapped the suit over it, but to me, I think the colors look more muted. They don't look as accurate as what it is in the movie. And like I said, you get creasing all over. The only problem I had with the original figure was the price. I think if the price wasn't as high as what it was, people wouldn't be as upset about it, calling it an overpriced Mondo figure. But the reality is sometimes you get what you want and you're not happy with it. And I've seen people already kind of complain, you know, complaining about, you know, this limited the posing. Um, yeah, you, you can't do anything. You're going to stretch the suit out. You can kind of see the joints underneath stretching through here on the knees, like right here. This goes to show me, look, this probably looks like, the if you guys can see this on camera, this probably is the original suit that they just slapped the suit over, which makes sense financially. But you can see the joints right here. If you see that, the square knee right here, and you see right here the creasing, this looks like the original figure that they just put the suit over, and it completely limited all articulation on the figure. So once again, I'm not getting it. I wasn't getting it before. I'm still not getting it now. And um, I just, like I said, sometimes you want change. People demand change. But... Be careful what kind of change you ask for, because there is definitely a percentage of people out there that wanted the figure as is that had these concerns. And there you go. There's all this bunching, increasing. 
Um, thanks so much, Monica, for getting these photos because these are the most up-close photos that I've seen. Yeah, see the knee right here? See the square? If you can see right on the screen, look at the knee. You see the square that looks like the original suit, the figure. They didn't probably retool the body. They just made a new suit to put over it, and you know that's, that's what it is. Yep, right there. There's the knee, um, and it is what it is. So for those who are getting it, um, I'm happy for you. If you're happy, that, that's it's your money. It's all I'm, you know. It's all I'm gonna say. Um, but I'm passing on this one. Um, next, this is like a comic origins Iron Man, which is die cast. This one was a little bit of a surprise to me. Uh, I'm really excited about this one. I, I may be adding it to the collection. I'm not totally sold on it yet, just because it will stand out like a sore thumb. All the Iron Man figures that I have are the cinematic universe versions with Robert Downey Jr. So this one might stand out like a sore thumb, but it is cool. I love the bright classic, you know, uh, red and yellow. Um, this is something that it, it may come home. I, I got to, I got to look on it. It's not going to be a day one pre-order. This is one that I got to kind of stew on and kind of check it out and see and get more, get more information on it. Um, but I do like the head sculpt. I like where it's going. Um, but for those who have the comic origins figures, uh, one could argue this might've should have, this maybe should have been the first figure. Um, you know, it, it, either way, but I'm happy we're getting this figure. When we talk about comic origins, I'm glad that this classic suit has been, um, announced and released and it's showing off so i do hope this is something that they stick with which is really cool but i really like this one a lot i love the classic golden yellow for if you're an iron man fan this is probably one that you do want to add to your collection just to kind of cap off that whole kind of uh all, all those different suits but this is really cool i love the detailing in the yellow once again i love how it's not just plain yellow um, there's detailing in it. There's work. There's there's robotic work in it to make it look like an you know an armored suit. I really love the contrast between the yellow and the red. And like I said, I love how it's just not yellow. You know, just plain yellow. I like how there's cutouts. There's grooves. Um, there's things like that in it. It's really great. I really like that a lot. Um, and then we're moving on to the Anakin Skywalker. Once again, these are updated photos that I got really good chance to see uh, with the rooted hair. Um, you know, you know the thing with Anakin is. There's been a lot of talk about this. Uh, at the time of making this video, I did secure one overseas and pay a, little, a higher price than what it is from Sideshow just because I don't have an Anakin and I really wanted this one in my collection. Um, so I did pay. You know, I was one of those that kind of paid the, the higher price. Um, not one to criticize anyone who does what they want with their money. But for me, um, I weighed the idea of you know picking up an Anakin on the aftermarket. And then from there, how much more money was I willing to add on top of it to get one for my collection? So I got a price that I was comfortable with um, that wasn't breaking the bank totally. So I was happy with it. So this one's coming home. Uh, obviously, some criticisms about this. You know, It probably should have had leather goods um, to kind of go all out. Really, the only uh, advancements, I would say, is the sculpt, um, the hair. I don't have the originals in hand to say about the style of the body or the cloak, you know, the cloak or anything like that. USB lightsaber. And as of right now, it only looks like it's USB lightsaber for Anakin saber. It does come with Dooku's, but it's but Dooku's was displayed just with the saber hilt with no USB on it. So that's something interesting that I hope that um you know, in, in the time frame that this figure comes out, that they really do do a justice and update Dooku's lightsaber with USB. Because it would be a shame if he really only came with one USB lightsaber if you want to do the uh, the dual pose with two sabers. Um, but I think the figure really does look really great compared to that really awful sideshow leaked photo when his hair looked like, you know, he was out, you know, he had an afro. Um, the styling of the hair obviously is going to be up to the collector and the person doing it. From what I see here, uh, the hair really does look really good. Um, it's styled more accurately. Obviously, you probably go in and do more work to it if you want, but I'm liking what I see. I don't have any complaints. I think the sculpt looks fantastic. I do like the hair better, so I'm really excited for it, and I really can't wait to add this one to my collection, um, and I hope that down the road we get more promotional photos of it, more video, things like that from it from Hot Toys, but this is really this is a banger that I'm so excited to get into the collection. And then moving on to that, then we have obviously the one that, you know, still raised a lot of interest, which was the Joker uh, came in the rooted and the sculpted. I don't want to delve too much into it because I made a separate video on the Joker. If you guys want to check that out, I'll leave a link uh, up above for it where I did. I talked about the comparisons with the Joker from Hot Toys and uh, in art. But these are just updated photos. And a couple of things I really wanted to draw attention to was um, 
the, the the coat the coat does seem to have weathering on it compared to the promotional photos the promo photos from hot toys didn't really look to see like the jacket was weathered a lot i know that was called out by a couple of youtubers who were saying how the coat looks a little too clean um from here i know it's kind of hard with the photos but you can see that there is dirt and grime on the coat how much of that really is you know we have to check it out and see but like here you can see that there's definitely dirt on the on the on the sleeves so the, the jacket isn't perfect as it's not meant to be um you can even see on here there's a little bit of weathering too this is the sculpted version um and like even the base looks really awesome i love how the the, the money has like the joker the joker on it the joker album and the one thing i'm interested about is that the bases are supposed to be usb light up and i'm really i'm really interested to see where that where that's going to be and then the other question that people have which is a which is a legitimate one is how is the figure you see the little usb wire plugging in but like how is the figure actually standing on the base is it magnetized or are they going to be using a um, like a clear pole system like they do with Indiana Jones? Or is there something going in directly to the bottom of the foot? So how it's actually attached to the base is also something of interest as well. But I love even like here, the hand with the butterfly knife, like kind of flipping it open. That was really cool. Um, the root of hair looks really good on this. I can't deny. It. I mean, the way this is obviously styled, the hair is kind of falling a little bit in front of the face. Um, the only thing I would kind of say is I think there's, once again, still a little bit too much hair on the figure. Um, Heath Ledger was thinning out during the making of, you know, during the movie. So his hairline was receded uh, a bit more than what you see here with the figure. Um, I believe in art captured that a little bit better in some of the photos um, that I've seen on the figure. So I really do hope, maybe hope that Hot Toys kind of does some retooling on it. I hope this isn't the final, that they kind of go back and kind of clean up the hair a little bit just for my sake. Um, in my opinion, I mean, just so that, you know, it gets kind of cleaned up. But like I said, everything looks really cool. The base looks good. Um, the sculpted version, um, I still think that the sculpted version for Hot Toys, it looks better than the in-art one. I stand by that. The rooted, I completely leave that open to subjectivity of which one looks better or not. I would have to see them both in hand to see. But based on the photos, I think that the Hot Toys sculpted does look better than the in-art one. Um, then once again, a classic pose with him holding the grenades open. Um, but, I, you know, the expression looks really great. Um, and once again, there is the display base with the joker money on the well, actually it's the dollar bills that have the joker you can see like the marker on the eyes and the lips on it so that's a nice little touch um and like i said the detailing on the hand with the thumb pulling the grenades and then this was an interesting photo this is actually the insert for the tongue and you see you see the money there as well so uh this is a nice photo i didn't really see a lot of up, up close photos of this so this is actually the insert tongue that would insert in if you want to do the expression with him with his tongue out um for those who don't know during the making of you know during the movie uh you know uh, heath ledger would often lick his lips for multiple reasons you know because the makeup was on his mouth and also making sure that the prosthetics were you know in place so that became kind of like a tick or something of the joker where he'd be licking his lips quite often um throughout the course of the movie so hot toys went back and decided to uh capture that um, which i thought was an interesting touch definitely a controversial thing that a lot of people were talking about in terms of you know well it looks kind of silly or not but at least it's not a permanent fixture you can choose not to use it if you don't want so i do applaud that move that they didn't make it a permanent sculpt and then once again these are all the accessories um i don't believe they're die cast i think they're all just plastic uh they didn't go the route as in art did but one, you know all the typical stuff that we're used to seeing and then you were just kind of the last couple photos are just gonna be kind of flip through photos drax from guardians of the galaxy um we don't have the complete line announced but he looks great um i like i can't wait to get this figure i did pre-order some of the guardians uh i did have older versions of the figures and i sold them off just because i couldn't get a complete set and i know a lot of people want drax people are a little disappointed that you know this will be the full version i know people wanted the one where he basically just has you know has no shirt on with the tattoos exposed but drax is a drax i'll take it he looks really fantastic looks like an up updated head sculpt as well compared to the original ones that we've seen so once again, fantastic photos from Monica. Shout out to you for these. These are just really great showing off the fine details. Um, there's Mantis as well. Looks great as well. Like, no complaints whatsoever. And then the life-size Gogru, Gogru, uh, Gogru in the Pram. Um, looks a little bit older there in the cheeks, which is interesting. But he has the chain link metal on uh, the suit on. Um, there's another piece that's cool. I don't have a one-to-one -one Grogu. I didn't have any of the previous ones. This is one that I actually would be interested in, in getting and having displayed in the corner of my room. Um, but nevertheless, these do look really cool. This does look really cool. So yeah, I like this a lot. 
And then um, once again, this is the little, I forgot the creature's name. Uh, do I have the photo? Uh, the, what's his name? I don't have the name of him. I'm sorry. Uh, in Mando season three, this is a one-to-one -one size. This is working on the IG-12. Uh, um, another, another great little figure, uh, character, one-to-one -one size, if you're interested um, to grab this. But detailing looks really awesome. Everything looks on point. So if you're going to add another one-to-one -to, -one to your collection, I mean, these are some, this is another great piece. And then the Dewback. This is definitely one of those that I was like, I really hope. And I, I love these. This is one of those characters where these photos really kind of cap captured me because of the detailing that you see here in the skin of the character this of, of the Dewback. This looks just so awesome. Um, I can't wait. I really hope that this one sees the light of day. This is one of those like of all these figures that we saw on display, this is definitely up there as one of those that I really hope sees the light of day and actually gets an official release. Um, and the Sand Trooper, I'm, I turned into a huge trooper nut. I love OG uh, troopers. I don't have any to my collection, so I really hope I get this um, so that I can get the Sand Trooper and the Dewback. This is just something that I have the space for. I absolutely love it. The, we the, old, the weathering, the detail on this is just outstanding. Um, and I really hope to, that this sees the light of day so that way... Uh, you know, I can bring this one into the collection. It's just, but I love the detailing, the scaling on the on the skin of this car of the Dewback. It's just, it's so awesome, and I really can't. I can't get more than one of these. I'm only going to get one because the price is probably going to be pretty pretty hefty. But a, an amazing piece nonetheless. And this is just like I said, details of the troop, the Sand Trooper, and the Dewback. These are just such great photos. So what I'll do is um, the description of this video. I'll drop a link to the Six Scale Survival Guide and the Hot Toys Hotline group. Um, where these photos are posted. If you want to go back and actually look at these in more detail, I'm just flipping through them and giving you my initial thoughts. But like I said, these things look, this looks fantastic. I'm so excited. And then the armor uh, 2.0 version um, shows off a little more details than I've seen. Definitely updated paint apps. Um, it has, comes with additional accessories, does have the jetpack, and what really an, an oversight on my part does come with the foundling, foundling's uh, helmet that uh, she was making in the first episode. That's a nice little touch. But armor 2.0, and there's the jetpack. I know people were wondering if it was going to come with a jetpack. So there she has the jetpack. Um, another figure that, you know, if you already have one, it's going to be up to you to decide if you want to bring another one into the collection, if you have an alternate pose for it. For me, I, I might fall sucker and pick it up because I did love the character and I love the character development of the armor. So that was just a fantastic one. And then Moff Gideon, uh, if you want to call it 2.0, um, I've been waiting for this. I opted to pass on the first Moff Gideon, even though he was on daily deals a lot of times through Sideshow. Um, I passed on it because I just think this is much more of a badass figure. And like I said, I just it's not disappointing in anything whatsoever. Um, I really love this one a lot, and I will definitely be getting this to add to my Mando collection along with the guards if the guards see the light of day. I'm really interested to see what Hot Toys does in terms of how they're going to package those for sale. Are they going to sell just one on its own, a two-pack? You know, Obviously, there's multiple weapons to choose from. So I'm interested to see how, if these guards come into play being sold by Sideshow, um, what's the sales strategy and how they do that. And then another R5, which looks to be a, a cleaner version compared to the one that was on pre-order from Sideshow. It's a little more of a cleaner version, which I'm really excited about this. I kind of turned into a droid nut. So that's another one. If it sees the light of day, I'll definitely grab that. But the detailing on these guards, I just they stand out so awesome. And, and to be honest with you, to back up the photos a little bit, um, I would love to have this with the three with Moff Gideon in there. That's just so awesome. That's such a badass display. Because um, I kind of have my own Mando shelf, so these would be welcomed into the collection. And the detailing on these characters, just and the the black and the red, is such a sick color combo with Moff Gideon um, that these would stand out so great. So this is awesome. And then another one, which is the Death Star control control station. Um, I would be picking up two of these. Um, this is another one along with the Dewback. I hope that this one definitely sees the light of day. Um, it's been teased multiple times. It's been in the quote unquote graveyard. A lot of people call. Um, but this is one that I really, really, really hope that we see get released finally. Um, I'll pick up two of these and have these on both corners of a shelf and kind of make like as part of my Star Wars display. Um, but yeah, this is another one that I really hope sees the light of day at one point. So I'm really excited about this. And, uh, and, and like I said, I really hope to pick this up. It's just that I'm kind of holding, you know, I'm like 90% ecstatic about it just because it's been teased before and it hasn't been released. So I kind of hope they give us the figure and break it out. And, and if you have other Star Wars uh, New Hope figures like the Han and, you know, the Han in Disguise Stormtrooper or Chewie, you could potentially, you know, swap out and, and use those figures with this base as well. So it, it offers a little bit of versatility um, if you have other Star Wars figures. Uh, let me see if there's anything else. 
Now these are the this these are the Hot Toys official photos from their website. And once again, just to kind of wrap up the video, I'm just going to kind of blow, uh, go through a couple of these video uh, these photos. So these are the official Hot Toys photos from their event. Um, I'm just kind of scroll through them pretty fast just to see if there's anything else that I missed that I haven't commented on. Um, you see the battle hopper here from, you know, this is another character that, um, it probably has more interest overseas than in, inside, you know, than probably in the U S but nevertheless, a great looking piece. Uh, this is one that I'm super excited for the young flash. This I'm really hoping that this sees the light of day, even with the flash kind of not having the success expected in the theaters. I think the sculpt looks great and the detailing on the suit. There's just so much going on with the suit. It's actually more interesting to me than the regular flash. So this is one that I hope finally rounds out the Flash collection that we do see this one, you know, make its appearance. It just looks really awesome. And once again, just some more updated, you know, some photos of the Joker uh, taken from this is from the Hot Toys official page. Uh, just blown, you know, going through some photos. This is the What If Hulk poster uh, that I'll be I'll be passing on. This. this is just from a What If episode that wasn't officially released. Um, looks cool, but just a little bit far fetched for my taste. Tony Stark. Uh, this is one. This is a great piece. Um, I'm gonna day one. I'm gonna pre-order this probably in a couple days. Um, I had my thoughts about the head sculpt. I hope the head sculpt gets tweaked a little bit. Um, and I do question how this thing is gonna get posed, just because I know they have it posed like this with a, a, a crotch, a flight stand. But I'm interested to see how this holds up because I would rather have this thing um, kind of more horizontal than vertical, just to kind of be more movie accurate. So this is another interesting piece that I want to see how it's displayed. But I really love it. I'll be bringing this home because it's one of the OG suits, one of the original seven. So got to have it. Once again, just showing the Spider-Man figures that we talked about again. Uh, Loki on Throne. This is another nice piece. I don't own a Loki, so I do hope that this one might might make it out there. Um, I almost pre, I almost bought the end game Loki and I kind of held off and then this was teased. So I, I'm going to hold off. I don't own a Loki. I do want one, but I'm going to see what they're doing with this first to kind of see, uh, you know, where it goes. And this is just showing the guardians line all together, which they look great. Um, the Modoc, I'm kind of up in the fence. I don't have any Ant-Man figures. So this one might be a pass for me. It's, just a, little, it's, it's a little creepy with the, it looks great. I just, it's going to be a rando in my shelf. Um, so I haven't decided whether or not this one will be coming home if it does get actually released. Uh, once again, Anakin looks really great. And then this is the picture I was looking for with the guards and Moff Gideon. They just look so awesome together. And I probably would have a display like this in my shelf. Absolutely love it. The detailing is just fantastic. And then the the other, the male and the female Mandalorians, I would probably pick up one of those, just kind of add them to the collection to bulk out my Mandalorian line. It's almost like Stormtroopers can't have too many Mandos, in my opinion. And then there's the IG-12 um, updated version, which I have that on pre-order already. The R5-D4 and Mouse Droid, which looks awesome. And there it is. There's the the gunner, the control panel gunner again. And there's the do back, just a kind of a more a panned out version, a photo of it, which looks awesome. No complaints there. And there is, I, I, there is the the droid smith. Yep, it's on a photo of the one to one, the Grogu and Pram. Yep, just showing some more photos of the Mandos. And then there's the the John Wick Chapter Four, Kane and John Wick. Which, oh man, I I really hope that we get this soon. I really love this. Absolutely looks fantastic. And then there's the Predator again, just a more panned out uh, picture of it. And then Indiana Jones, um, this was real, this, that was teased. Um, I, from my understanding, uh, there is some uh, issues with the release of this figure. Um, I think it was due to uh, one of the components. I believe it was um, we were on geeking out, and it was brought to my attention on there that uh, apparently there's an issue with the the satchel. Um, that apparently the satchel was used in the movie without the permission of the maker, which is causing some issues with licensing, which is probably is potentially one of the issues that as to why this figure isn't out for PO yet, um, because the satchels on the figure is obviously a replicated version of the one in the movie. And supposedly um, this is just, you know, I, I haven't done the research on it, but it's supposedly the satchel um, was used without permission. So therefore there, it's a little bit of a in dispute right now, but I do hope things get cleared up and that this figure gets, you know, available for PO. I think right now it's like an on, it's like on a, on a notification mode on side show to get notified when it goes out for PO, but another fantastic picture. So that will wrap up the video guys. Thanks so much for watching. Once again, I just wanted to run through some of these great photos that I received from Monica today, along with other people who posted them online. Um, I'll post the groups that I talked about with those video photos in the description below. 
um, to the Six Scale Survival Guide and the Hot Toys Hotline group page that has those photos. So if you want to look at them more in depth, you can do so. Um, I'm really excited for all these releases that are coming out, and I'm really excited for the new Wonder Woman uh, woven, you know, um, rooted hair that's supposed to be coming out. Um, I am going to be getting that figure, and it's really going to be the Hot Toys' first test of how the uh, the wool hair is going to be. So when I get that, I'll be filming a review. Um, like I said, I usually stream every Sunday and with other people from Geeking Out and Hot Toys Hotline. So definitely check out those channels. They're my boys. They do great work as well. I'll put their links in the uh, description below. And do me a favor. If you watch this video, drop a comment below and let me know what figures here you're most excited to see. What really caught your attention? What got you excited from all the things that you saw from this, uh, the Hot Toys event? And uh, just flipping through. And what are your thoughts on some of these figures? So definitely drop a comment below. Definitely drop a like on the video. And, make, and if you're not subscribed to the channel, you like what you see, consider subscribing to the channel. And I thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.